Well, very good evening, everyone. I'm pleased to say we've managed to hold this on the correct day. Yeah, well done. Which is really, I'd actually forgotten all about Storm Doris, but that was 12 months ago that we were all scheduled to be here, and we ended up being here a bit late. Um, as a result, the, the tone of it will change slightly in the sense that obviously by that time we had all the handicap weights out last year, so we spent a little bit of time talking about the handicaps. We'll probably stick very much to the conditions races this time around. Uh, obviously, as you know, this coincides with the publication, I said what last year's here, of the 2018 Cheltenham Festival Betting Guide, where the biz and they're on sale tonight at uh, £10, and we've also, of course, got the raffle in aid of the Injured Jockeys Fund. That's a, a pound a ticket, and tickets will be available there from the back throughout the evening. Um, try and get them by sort of the end of the break, that way we can make sure we draw them and don't keep you behind at the end unnecessarily. We've also got an extra added bonus because I've got Jack Quinlan um, alongside me. Jack's got a big ride in terms of Kalashnikov, so rather than keep him here all night, we just thought we'd first race, we'd talk about Kalashnikov. And I mean, what a fantastic horse he's been, Jack. Yeah, no, I'm, um, I'm incredibly lucky to, to be involved with him. He's, uh, he's certainly one that I think is... Uh, got a lot of ability and he's going to have, have some big days on him uh, after our big day at Newbury. Um, we'll chat about the Supreme in a minute, but sort of, you're obviously associated with, with Amy's yard and have been with this horse right from the word go, so when did he first come to sort of the yard's attention that he might just be something a little bit out of the ordinary? Um, he was obviously, he was, Amy's father bought him as a foal after having bought his older sister, Colleen, who was doing well with Charlie Longton at the time. Um, and when Amy set up training, two of the first horses in the yard were Kalein and then obviously Kalashnikov and I mean he's a horse you couldn't help but fall in love with we loved him from day one um, we obviously gave him his first run in a bumper back in March up at Weatherby uh, we knew he possessed a lot of ability but because he found things so easy at home he was a bit of a playboy so we didn't know how streetwise he'd be but he um, he was very good that day knuckling down well in the last furlong and pulling right away um, and he's done nothing but improve since and that steady progression, he, he beat one of Emma Lavelle's at, at, at Doncaster. But then we got to the Tolworth, which obviously was a big day for the yard. And it's, it was desperate ground. And his trademark had been to that point that he, as you say, he seems to be able to do anything so easily. But it became apparent from a quite an early stage that that ground was something he hadn't encountered before. Um, yeah, he's a, he's a good action horse. He's by Canon Easy, which normally want better ground. So we were, we were concerned about the, the heavy at Sandown, and Sandown heavy is as bad as you'd get anywhere um, and he, yeah he didn't travel at all well early on he pulled his shoe at the second which probably didn't help either but to his to his credit he was he was very very tough and very game and he, he galloped all the way to the line to still finish second um, in what which was um, it was my first competitive ride in, in a graded race so um, you know a little bit disappointed not to come away with a win but delighted at how he performed under under those circumstances yeah because going out on that I mean, we don't jump to by the time you turn away at Sandown. Going out on that, you were already, I won't say unhappy, but far more active than you'd ever been on him before. And the perception at that stage might be that you could be beaten outside if he's not handling the ground at all. Yeah, no, I'd, I would say I was, I was very unhappy um, <laughs> heading out away from the stands. And knowing him so well and knowing the ability he does have, if, you know, halfway down the back, I'm thinking if we drop away here, I, I'd be easy on him and pull him up because there's going to be plenty more days in him. And like I say, it was just, it was to his credit and his bravery that he just kept plugging away and kept finding a little bit more for me to finish second. And that's when you begin to think he might be a really good horse, I suppose, because if he's got some sort of natural ability, but then he manages to couple with, with actually wanting to do it when conditions get a bit tough. Because obviously you must have been cursing the rain that was falling at Newbury on the morning of the Betfair Hurdle, because, you know, you're potentially well handicapped. It's a race that's gone well to young and experienced horses, but you were getting ground that was beginning to head towards how it had been at Sandown. Um, yeah, he obviously, at Sandown, he, he proved to us that he was a complete package. Not only did he possess an awful lot of ability, he had the, the correct attitude to go along with it. Um, and yet, all week leading up to Newbury, it was a dry week and they had the frost covers down and the ground was getting better and better and we were getting more and more confident. Um, and of course, we driving to Newbury, I think the whole way there after leaving Newmarket, it poured with rain. Um, got there and it just rained all day and the ground was getting softer and softer. Um, and I'd have, I'd have called Newbury, I'd have called it heavy, but it's a, a different type of heavy to sand down. It's uh, much wetter, looser ground. They can get through it that bit better. But I think um, the heavy ground at sand down came as a real shock to him. Uh, he was just a little bit better equipped to, to handle it, um, having had experience on it at, at Newbury. Um, but he had also, he's a horse that's improved with every single run. He'd improved a hell of a lot. He was a, he was a much better horse at Newbury than he was at sand down. Big day for you, big day for the yard. Uh, must have been fantastic, but again, there was just that little flat spot, sort of after the first down the back, where 
you know, watching him thinking, hmm, I wonder if he's going through similar to Newbury, but as you say, uh, so to Sandown, but he picked up relatively quickly and you, you got there actually travelling pretty well. Yeah, I think I was, I was niggling and going past the winning post after and jumping one hurdle um, and all the way down the back it was probably his jumping, he was, he was, he was, he is a very good jumper, he was great at his hurdles that day and so he was just able to get a breath in after every hurdle um, and I switched him, I switched him out a little bit and I was, by having watched the replay back I was the only one off the bridle but he was picking up under pressure but I didn't expect him to pick up quite the way I did. I thought he'd pick up maybe the two out and then they'd all pick up around him. But he um, he just kept finding and he actually then, you know, he won quite cosily in the end. It's a great photo finish. Have you got a copy of it? Yeah, I have, have yeah. You know, um, it went round on Twitter and Facebook and things. So obviously the photo finish is taken when they cross the line and um, Jack's pose is uh, that's, that's pretty <laughs> biblical actually it's a, in the yeah. air sort of you know you know I've had a little yeah, bit of a stick <laughs> <laughs> I've just had a, I've had a little bit of stick about it but um, no it's it was a, a, a huge day for me and a huge day for Amy and you know you don't know how often they're going to come around so uh, I made the most of it and yeah I, yeah, I think um, yeah, it's good to show how much it means to you absolutely um, Supreme is going to be the confirmed target definitely yeah he obviously holds an entry both the Supreme and the Ballymore but um it is, he is 100% being targeted at Supreme. I don't want to get too carried away. It's obviously three weeks away, and he's got to prove to us that he's he's 100% when he to to take his chance there. But because um, you know, obviously he had a hard race at Newbury, and he is only a five-year-old, and we we think he's a he's going to be a better horse in the future, so we would look after him. But um, the signs at home anyway are that he's come out of it incredibly well. He's uh, Amy rides him herself nearly every single day and she's uh, not letting go of her neck strap just yet. He's very, very fresh. Yeah, of course, it'll be interesting to see what the weather holds for the week, but being based at Newmarket, I suppose, in a way, that might turn out to be an advantage because they will have sufficient staff, etc., to presumably keep some of the gallops going and keep you on the move. Yeah, no, we're, we're incredibly lucky. We've got um, fabulous facilities down in Newmarket and, as you say, whatever the weather holds, um, the, the Heathmen do a fantastic job, not only with the, the all-weather gallops, but also the all-weather schooling grounds. So, um, it, uh, yeah, so long as so long as Cheltenham isn't frozen off, we'd be absolutely fine. <laughs> yeah, I don't fancy we'll come back here again in another month. That'd be pretty tricky. Um, and just lastly, um, Mercy and Prince, I know, was a, the possibility for for some of the Cheltenham races. Be suggesting he might go elsewhere. Yeah, he he holds an entry in the I can't think what it's called, but it might be the Brown Advisory now on the on yeah. the Thursday. It used to be the Burn Group Plate, and before that, the Mild Mayor Fleet. Um, he's a he's a progressive handicap chaser, but I think his primary target is the Greatwood Gold Cup at Newbury um, next Saturday, uh, which I think he'd have a good chance in. I think he's a horse that's yet to show his best because I think he'd be at his best in a really strongly run competitive handicap chase where he's he's in to he needs to be in top gear all the way. Uh, and he's probably travelled just too well through his last couple of races, but had still managed to win. Thanks for your time this evening. I'm going to let you go, but uh, we wish you all the very best. It's always a really nice fairy story, isn't it, when you get a horse that everyone can get behind. Um, you know, a, a yard that maybe aren't in the limelight so much early on in their career and a big big ride for you. So thanks for taking the time tonight. Nice. Um, I think you can meet Kalashnikov as one of the um, charity raffle prizes. Yeah. I so, so um, yeah. chance there if you uh, want to get involved. So many, th many thanks. Jack, all the very best for Cheltenham. Nice. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right, I'm going to introduce the rest, the rest of the panel and then we'll begin to scuttle through races. Um, I think most of you that have been before will sort of have a rough idea of the format. We'll be chatting. Um, about the feature races each day. Michael Shinners from Skybet um, will rush us through the market a little bit and we'll obviously take views from the panel as and when we come across people that want to concentrate on the races. Rather, what we won't do is we won't spend four hours talking about the Supreme and then rattle through the rest. It was my intention to be able to get you to ask questions both before the break and at the end. So That's we'll why we sponsor it. Try and keep the pace up. That's why we sponsor the Supreme, so you talk for four hours yeah, and then we run out of time. It's a pretty good... Pretty good uh, Why is it right? I think we've got... Right. Is that OK? Right. So we'll pass those around as we go. So, if I can introduce the panel. The man has already had a very good afternoon, which is always, it's always nice. Might be nice if you're going to be here and you've had a, a rough day, but what on, Harry, this afternoon? It's pretty good. Yep. Yep, that was a good afternoon. So, tried to get the third, the third one up, but didn't manage that. Yeah, that was pretty good, actually, I think. Yeah, yeah. good race. I play cricket with him and it's a pride and joy, so <laughs> you, might be, you might have just bumped into one there, I think. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think two of you are well clear. So, um, obviously, Harry can talk about um, Dan's horses and the few of the rides he's, he's going to have. Um, also got uh, Matt Brocklebank. Um, Sporting Life and uh, dot com, and we're going to have a chat about um, some of the horses that fancies. Um, Michael Shinnis from Skybet, graciously sponsoring this evening, and of course the first race of the festival, which will no doubt 
mentioned lots of times, <laughs> it's the Sky Rep Supreme Novices Hurdle, and we'll finish him with the markets. And Matt Toombs, who's very much the star of the show really tonight, because it's obviously the publication of the 2018 um, Weatherby's Cheltenham Festival Betting Guide, which has been invaluable um, servant to most of us down the years. But the good thing about this particular betting guide is it, it tends to stay with the times rather than dwell in the past. And each year there's a couple of little extra tweaks, so we'll ask Matt to mention a few of those as we go. OK, we're going to kick straight on with the Skybet Supreme Novices Hurdle. Um, every year we seem to have a Willie Mullin source that dominates this market. I was looking back, so Vertour, Duvan, they both won. Min and Mellon didn't quite win, but they, they took a fair share of the market. This, this year's renewal is Get a Bird, who, who heads the market. Yeah, that's it, Richard. We took the um, decision about three or four years ago to sponsor the Moscow Fly Race, because that's the race that uh, William Williams seems to um, uh, sort of bring his best novices out. And as you said, we have the tour, Duban, Min, who's obviously second to Altior. And Get a Bird won the race um, this year. He's into 13 to 8. Um, which appears very short uh, on the face of it. We've got Apple Shakira at six, but obviously very likely for her to go elsewhere. And then we've got If the Cap Fits and, and Jack's horse, Kalashnikov. Um, that horse was 12, 14 to one um, prior to the Betfair, and he's now six to one and, and really popular. So get a bit 13 to eight with ourselves. Um, very much expect to go off favorite and a short price favorite. Um, and yeah, we, uh, we're, Putting, we'll be putting our offers out as a bookmaker very shortly, but um, I'm sure that he's going to be very, very popular. Yeah, I should also point out, I think we've mentioned this before, that obviously you know, you're know you all sitting there as punters wanting to get the best of the value. Virtually every bookmaker will offer some for a promotion on the first race because you've got 26, 7 to, to give it back to them. But if you're nice and disciplined as a punter, then obviously this is the race you should be able to turn all those percentages to your advantage. As regards trends, Matt, um, what we sh which should we be looking for? Or is there anything that we should be steering clear of? Uh, it's generally been going to horses with plenty of experience. There was a lot of debate last year, Mellon coming off one run. I mean, Get a Bird's only had two, and the last nine have all had at least four runs over hurdles, so he is considering a, a little bit of experience there. I think there are lots of reasons to take him on, actually. Um, looking at that Moscow Flyer run, he was visually impressive, but Gordon said afterwards he was disappointed how close Card Mackay in high school days got to uh, Mangley Card and didn't think he gave his running there. Get a Bird's run right-handed so far under rules. He did run out going left uh, in a point, so there's a bit of a question mark there. He's apparently pretty fragile. Um, Patrick Mullins was saying his confirmation isn't very good. They're struggling hard training. Um, so when Vertur and Duban and even Min, who didn't win this, were there, they were the, the Mullins banker for the Supreme for most of the season. There's a bit of a feeling here that Animix and Sale were their horses for the Supreme in the autumn. They both got injured and he's sort of a bit of a round peg in a square hole. Uh, so for me, certainly at 13 to 8, he's one I'll be looking to take off. <coughs> okay, so it's like negative to get a bird. I must admit, it is quite noticeable his action isn't the best. He does sort of cycle a little bit in front, whether that will need really soft ground or whether it's just a trait of his, but it would be a slight concern for if he's got issues about his durability. Matt, did you have any, any strong view in that? <coughs> um... He's the right favourite. Um, he's uh, if you look at the ratings across these horses, he's already rated nine and one hundred and fifty-two. Which, being a bit of a nerd, he's the sixteenth highest rated hurdler in Ireland, which is um, puts him on a par with Jez Key and the likes of Room Room Mag. Which, after two attempts, is obviously pretty impressive, pretty good going. Um, he's going to see out the trip extremely well, something that you certainly need in a in a Skybet Supreme. And we probably know he's going to get a pretty forceful ride as well, having made all last time out. And it's it's kind of the, the MO for the Mullins-Walsh um, horse in this race. Um, and he's he's going to take a bit of pegging back, I think. Um, two to one a couple of days ago, and it looked like there might still be a bit of life in that. And 13 to eight suddenly making me run a bit scared of him. And, I, and I, I'm not totally sh sure at all. Um, Paloma Blue, I thought, looking at the prices, uh, takes uh, the eye as a bit of each way value in this race. Uh, he's not really been talked about a great deal, but he's uh, he's wasn't far off sort of the best of these in, in Irish bumpers last season. He actually finished to second to Fayona in the uh, grade one at the Punchestown Festival. Uh, and he's, he's finally looked like he's really getting to grips with hurdling after being a little bit disappointed in his first couple of goes. And, and last time out, he was third to Sam Crow, um, obviously a, a pretty well-hyped horse. Uh, not from within the camp, though, if you believe the O'Leary's. Um, 
third to that horse, and he actually gave him a bit of a race uh, that day at Leopardstown, and um, sort of between two out and the last, uh, and then weakened into third. But it was a, it was a fantastic effort, really, all things considered. And if if Sam Crow is the real deal, then you've got to be looking at these horses that have been placed in behind him. And uh, Paloma Blue for Henry de Bromed might be the each way value at this stage. Okay, so that's one. We've spoken almost exclusively, Harry, so far about sort of Irish horses. Yeah, one thing I know, well, I think an Irish horse will win it, because <laughs> out of the betting, the top 12, I think there's only three English horses. Hmm. I think the English novices this year, two miles, is, is weak. Um, I don't think um, Claim and Taken for Gan, uh, Somerville Boy, and um, if the cat fits, probably got form strong enough to be winning this race. Um, Collision Cobb obviously has been, you know, he's been a massive improvement. Like Jack said, I just worry on better ground. Two miles around there could be a bit sharp for him. Um, he, he's a proper strong stare. So obviously, I think Getterbird is probably the worthy favourite. But if you're looking for a bit of value, I think um, Gordon Elliott's horse, uh, Mangley Khan, 14 to one, who's second to Getterbird the last day, had a good horse back in third. And I know they were very, very shocked that Mangley Khan got beat the last day. So at 14 to one, I'd probably have to, you know, side with him. So it seems to be the general consensus is that if uh, if one Irish horse fails, there'll be plenty of others in the wings. I'm sure um, Jack would want us to mention Kalashnikov in a positive light. It's funny Kalashnikov because um, one of my favourite ever horses was Pegwell Bay, and Kalashnikov, after he ran his very first race at Weatherby, reminds me so much of him, the way he moves and agile. So I have followed him quite a lot. But he is one of those that sort of still changes your mind slightly because I must admit, I thought in the top of the halfway that he was going to be a good ground two miler but the yeah. way he toughed it out the I other day means that you know you're, you're questioning now with the best horses are running scared of Sam Crow and I think that's probably maybe siding them a little bit towards this uh, way, you know heavy ground uh, Kaleshnikov definitely like Jack you know, said before I think he'd be better on better ground but there's no, no let up in a supreme you know no he's, he's a that's a sharp track on yeah, it's worth, you know, it is worth pointing it's, out it's a very very sharp track you've got to have something that, that travels well mainly cars a flat horse yeah, by Luke de Vega, he's got plenty of pace and he stays well, you know. Let's pick up on that just for a second because obviously the first two days they run on the old course and the easiest way to remember is just that the, the first two days the old course is used for the speed test and it is really the speed track, whereas the new course used for the staying events in days three and four. Because it comes back in at a, a shallower angle, basically, you can keep your momentum up a lot longer. It's quite surprising, isn't it, how sharp the old course is, the turning to the straight, particularly on the chase course, when you arrive at the second yeah, last. Uh, uh, people that maybe haven't had uh, been lucky enough to walk around, it's, it's a completely different place. You know, the new and the old course, the first two days, it's rough and um, not for the faint-hearted. No, it's, it's really odd. You, you're so close to the stands when you when you turn for home there, when I you're think, walking. I think that's why I might stand uh, at the prices at 14 to 1, that's why I think it might stand mainly Khan in good, in good stead because he's off the flat, he's a hard, you know, he's, a, he's hardy, you know, I think get the bird obviously at that price, who can be back in that at 15 to 8. On to the second race then, the Racing Post article which features, well it'll be the first, there's two Irish bankers really isn't it, Footpad and Sam Crow, so how short is Footpad? With you? Yeah, he's even money um, with ourselves. After he won in Ireland, um, he shortened up um, to go what's on. He's just drifted out slightly um, with St. Calvados staking um, his claim at Warwick, so the price is slightly drifted out. But yeah, I mean, he was um, he was very he's been very good two or three times now. His jumping's obviously um, good. I suppose the question mark would be that he's gone from the front on each occasion and maybe if he's taken on from, uh, for the lead with St. Calvados, would that set it up for the likes of Petit Mouchoir who ran well. He's been fairly popular in the last couple of days, he's into seven to two, second favourite, and then you've got St. Calvados at five, and So Royal, who's probably the forgotten horse of the race, to be honest, at six to one, but was incredibly impressive at Sandown. But yeah, as it stands at the moment, there's three real short ones on the first day. Um, you've obviously got Getterbird, you've got Footpad, and then obviously we'll come on to over there, and from a bookmaker's point of view, we want one of the three beaten. Um, probably Getterbird is the more likely of the three, but um, Footpad's very good. But it looks like he's got a few horses to um, a few horses to beat in this. I think I should probably bring you in, Harry, here because North Hill there's only 13 entries left at this stage, only five of which are, are from the UK, uh, for this side of the water, as opposed to the Irish Sea. And one of them is North Hill Harvey. And not only is it North Hill Harvey, but obviously you've ridden in on North Hill Harvey against So Royal and. And St. Calvados. How impressed were you by St. Calvados the other day? 
Yeah, you know, I was very impressed with the ground. Was very, very testing at, at Warwick, and he's done it all in heavy ground, um, which I think this you know really suits me. He's by Saint to Saints that um, you know that love that love heavy ground, and he's been on flat tracks. So I suppose you know you can only he's only delivered what they've asked of him. Um, but this has been you know again um, a different sort of test. So I think Footpad's going to take a hell of a lot of beating. Um, I was I, I was encouraged by the way Petit Mouchoir ran. Leopardstown, he he he, he, he hurdled a few offences, and if they can just brush that up, I think he could get a bit closer to him. And at the end of the day, it's a novice chase, but footpads look absolute foot perfect. And I think if there was one banker, I'd say it'd be him on the first day. Um, North Hill Harvey, but obviously we were disappointed last day. I don't know what went on, but he, he never took me at all. Um, I was beat after two fences, and and, and basically come home in my own time. Um, he seems in good form since. Um, he loves Cheltenham, a bit better ground, and I think there could be a hard, uh, hard, hard pace up front, and maybe if we just sit off that, we might be able to pick up some crumbs. Okay, um, so that's North Hill, Harvey, So Royal, and St Calvados hitting the, the UK Challenge. I seem to remember from the traits for this going the years, you do want a good hurdler. Yeah, absolutely, and we've had a lot of horses winning this who've been coming from novice hurdles in recent years. It's been harder. This year we've got four from the, the champion hurdle. Um, and you know how good these horses are. Uh, just a, as a quick recap, um, Petit Mouchoir finished ahead of Footpad, who finished ahead of Sir Royal, and Brain Power was too keen and was well beaten in that. Um, but quite often you find that they end up in the same order in the half when they take each other on. Uh, so uh, I think Brain Power has um, obviously had an interrupted preparation. The interesting thing with the cheek pieces come back on, he's been better going right handed so far, so it might be that he's more one for punches down. So Royal is a fantastic jumper. Um, if the ground comes up, the sort of good quick ground we had 2014, 15, 16, it'll help him. Um, but it is hard to come from off the pace in the Arkle. Conquer is the last one to do it, so you don't want to be giving them too much of a, a lead up front. I just wonder whether he's more one for the, the future, more a sort of special TR or a side of Gucci dodging bullets. He doesn't really see the two miles out at this stage. Um, interesting to hear about uh, Harry talking about St. Calvados. Uh, he reminds me a bit of Sean Bled, who won 20 years ago, came over a few races in France over hurdles, and then run on soft ground. Um, they don't get the, the eight pound weight rage allowance anymore, the five year olds. It's a big difference, they've got a terrible record since that went. Um, so I'd, I'd like to see him do it. Uh, the fancy prices are gone now, so you need to go on weather watch if you fancy him. Um, but personally, I'd like to see him do it on decent ground before backing him. So I think the, the two at the front of the market are the right two. Uh, I think footpad looks fantastic, but I think that the prices are wrong. Petit Mouchoir uh, beat him three times pretty easily last year, and you know, Davy Russell was politely, you'd say, giving him a very tender ride for a grade one last time. He was four lengths down coming into the straight. He pulled him out wide, kept him away from a duel, um, just you know, not even riding out hands and heels. So it was very much a prep run for this. Uh, as I say, he beat him all three times pretty easily last year. If he takes the occasion, and that is important, last year Petty Mouchard got very worked up in the preliminaries. He was on his toes at the, at the Irish Arkle. Um, but if he does take the occasion, then I think he's got a reasonable chance of turning it round. I think Footpad's the right favourite, but they should be closer together. And I'm not surprised Michael's saying there's money for Petty Mouchard. I think come today, the they'll be quite a bit closer together in the market. And you know, if you were having a bet now, I think he's the right bet. Okay, so pretty much one not to be discounted. It was a couple of early errors. His, uh, his errors in Ireland came early, and after that, I think Davy was just trying to teach him to jump. With the, he had a, a sort of odd corkscrew technique over the first couple, which didn't really help, but maybe he's going to get his jumping together. Any strong view, Matt, in terms of that, whether you're going to agree with the other Matt? Very much so, yeah. I agree absolutely entirely with him. He was the best of these other hurdles. Uh, you watch back the champion hurdle last year. He led the field turning in. He just got done for a bit of speed by two very classy Nicky Henderson horses, of course, Bouvedere and Maitano yours. He was the best of these other hurdles, 160. I mean, <coughs> brain power was 160 as well, uh, but uh, footpad was 157. I know I know it's close that, but um, Petit Mouchoir, he's done it on spring ground. Uh, footpad's record on better ground is, is nowhere near as strong. Uh, you just get the better better hurdlers winning the Arkle, and over two miles on that course, he's going to be quicker than Footpad, and I really, really strong, strongly fancy Petit Mouchoir to reverse that form. Okay, so some quite strong views there for Petit Mouchoir against Footpad in the um, Racing Post Arkle. The feature race on day one is of course the Unibet Champion Hurdle. We have 19 horses, 10 Irish, uh, 9 
uh, English. The, obviously, the strong hand held by Nicky Henderson in all of the feature races has been well documented. Actually, I'll start again with Harry. Can I start again with you? Um, it's actually a, 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 a question that actually revolves around the whole meeting as a whole. Ireland have gone this route of putting all their races together in one weekend, which was really competitive, and they ran against one another, and, you know... Um, they were three or four deep in terms of the quality. Whereas a lot of the trials we've had in this country have been Bouvardier who's you know, gone off two to 11, one to 16 and what have you. you know, if you're looking to prep a race, where, where does it become too easy for a Bouvardier, if you know what I mean? In, yeah. First time he's gonna to have to battle this year is probably gonna be in the champion hurdle. Yeah, it's a nice problem to have, isn't it? <laughs> um, but look, I mean, he's the right favorite, isn't he? But he's very short and you know, he's probably worthy of that price on what he's done last year. What he's done this year, he's he's gone through everything effortlessly. He hasn't had a ra you know he hasn't basically like you say he hasn't had a race. Nicky there saying in the paper that he's he's frustrated because he can't give him a good gallop at Kempton on on Saturday maybe. But um, look, he, I'm sure maybe there's not too many people sitting here who's going to back Boobie there at five to two, uh, five to two one. So something's just telling me the man can pull rabbits out of hats, but. At six to one places, Fahim, something's telling me that he's a good price. Yeah, so I don't know. I don't know what, but what it is. But I, I was impressed with him the last day after. Obviously, something went terribly wrong. Um, but he battled well the last day on heavy, heavy ground, and I think he could just come back to a bit of life on on better ground, bit of spring weather. I, I there's something telling me that he. he you know, six to one, that he could run a big race. Let's just chat, Michael, not about the prices that they're just not about now, but how these two have progressed. Because obviously, this uh, the short price for Bouvardier has largely been through others actually um, fluffing their lines. Because Paul Bouvardier has won his three egg and spoon races, really. He's no better than we've seen him last year, but others have fallen by the wayside. And Fahim has yo yoed in the market from looking completely out of things to. Um, I think. Yeah, Coming back. Was it? If he comes, if Fahim comes, he's got a chance. Yeah, I think that's fair. Yeah, I mean, he's Fahim is our worst result in the non runner no bet market. Um, he's five to one with ourselves. Um, if the first two, if one of the first two gets a bird or full pad were to get beaten, um, I think as a bookmaker, we'll be cheering on Boomer there um, because. <coughs> There'll be money for Fahim, my tend to yours will probably be popular each way, there'll, you know, there'll be other horses that'll be backed, but Boobadair at two to five will be fairly um, sort of friendly. So it sounds it sounds strange when you're talking about a two to five shot, but as you said, Richard, people aren't particularly bothered about backing two to five shots um, in singles. And we are betting to sort of spice it up um, without and I think that gives it gives a little bit more of an angle. You've got Fahim at seven to four without Boomer there. Three to one might tend to yours, um, and then you're looking at um, of the horses that are probably going to run Elgin at six to one. So, if you think that um, if you think Fahim's going to sort of really sort of run him close, I think a lot of people. Um, I, I don't know if it's I don't know if it's going to be a feast or famine with Fahim. Is he is he going to win or is he just going to bomb out? I'm not sure. Yeah, it's very difficult with Fahina. I, I was sort of in your camp bit, Harry, in the sense I was quite, in, you know, I, th I thought he got himself into a position to go and win a, the other day. He just, he didn't have the sharpness to do it. Ruby tried to tell me on Racing UK that actually fact they, they'd put plenty of work into him, but the back of your mind, if, if you'd had a runner that you didn't know what was wrong with him, human nature is to but back off him slightly, isn't yeah, it? Obviously on the back of his pull-up, you know, you sort of, I suppose you're just hoping that he doesn't pull up and runs a good race. And, I just think turning in, they put him under pressure and he just kept, he, he kept finding the line. One thing you've got to do in the champion hurdle is stay. Like there's, there'll be no let up, it's hard from, as soon as that flag fall goes, it's a hard end to end gallop and you've seriously got to, you know, you've got to stay really well. That's one thing he does. I, I, look, the likely winner, Bouvardier, will you, would you back him at five to two on? Maybe not. So I, I'm just saying that maybe at six to one, you know, this, he, he might be able to, to run a big race. We'll run Chitty Bello in the race. He was disappointed in the last day at Wincanton. We all thought he'd go and win, but the reality of it is probably the new one beat him again at Wincanton because he had a hard race up at Haydock. He probably didn't get over that. Um, because he's a good horse, they come out of the race so well. He's on, you know, he, he's, he's a fit he's a fit animal and he's shown all the right signs at home that he they either come out of it well, but you know, you don't really know to get to the track. So one thing is if it dries up a lot, he's a strong travelling horse and 
I wouldn't wouldn't be under possibility to run into a place with him. Um, Mellon and York Hill, well, York Hill obviously won't run. Um, my ten to yours is an old warrior at ten to one. I'm, he, he's probably the each way value. He's probably your bet with that. Boomer Dare, isn't he? The likely winner is Boomer Dare, but something said him at six to one. Um, if you're not an odds-on backer, Fahin might might just be able to to outrun his odds. Okay, Matt, you find a word on the champion hurdle for you. Yep, um, I honestly think Fahin would probably have a better chance uh, in the stayers hurdle because I don't think he can win this. He can't beat Boubadair. Um He's just such a solid favourite. He's a slick jumper. He's everything you want in a champion hurdler. Uh, and I know Nicky Henderson would have been lucky enough to go to the yard this week. Uh, and it's very much all systems go. I know there was a couple of headlines suggesting that he wasn't particularly happy with the preparation uh, and the races maybe. There's certainly the one at Kempton where he, I think he thought he'd prefer a hard, had a harder race. They could have sent him to Ireland, <laughs> take it off for then, couldn't he? I mean, you know. Exactly. I think, I think secretly he was particularly very, pretty happy with the preparation. Um, uh, he'll win. Um, Wicklow Brave catches the eye. He's actually the second highest rated hurdler behind Faheen in Ireland. Um, he ran a massive race. He was, he was eighth I've, I've, with Putty Mouchoir. I've watched last year's champion hurdle about 50 times. Um, and Wicklow Brave is the one that catches the eye, actually. He, uh, he sort of all but refused at the start. He gave up about eight lengths. Uh, and then suddenly turning for home, he's there looming up on the outside, jumping the third last with what looked like every chance before weakening, and he finished eighth. But he's actually an extremely talented horse. Um, he's a 112 flat horse, which is extremely high, and he's won six four over hurdles, which puts him right up there ahead of ahead of all these horses that are shorter than him in the betting, the likes of uh, Mellon and uh, and my ten um, my ten um, And he could he could run a huge race, and maybe without the favourite betting there, uh, Wicklow Brave uh, at a big price. Okay, so Wicklow Brave positive there, but the difficulty of that market is going to be you, you really have to take a view on Faheen, don't you, really? Pricing Faheen up actually must be really quite hard for you, Michael. You don't get my sympathy very often, but you do slightly there. Oh, thank you, Richard. Unfortunately, I used to price him up. I don't bother anymore. I just um, <laughs> Let's have a talk about him. Yeah. <laughs> the bad news for Michael is that after Gallibirds won the first, Footpaths won the second, and Bouvardez won the third, what he actually should be worried about is the four-timers, because Apples Jade's going to win the mares as well. So, do, you, yeah. do you know what? I was just saying, I was going on about these three horses, and I've... I completely forgot about Apple's yes. Jane because <laughs> she's definitely going to win, isn't she, to be honest? Well, I would have thought so. I mean, um, it's, yeah, they're I mean, definitely going for this, uh, you know, to all intents and purposes. It's the only race that they've contemplated sticking her in, so, you know. Yeah, I mean, she's 8 to 13. The, although she only scrambled home in Ireland at Christmas, that form was, was massively boosted um, with Super Sunday. So, I mean, she looks um, head and shoulders above. Above these, she um, could probably run in a uh, and go really well in the champion hurdle or a stairs hurdle. And um, so, yeah, we could definitely do with um, get a bird and probably footpad losing the first two. We're just just knocking it all on the head early doors. Uh, the revenge of Annie Power. I mean, the punters uh, <laughs> getting their own back. Um, Matt, let's come to you for for any views on this. Is it anything outside Apple's Jade? Is Apple's Jade past the post? Are we being too premature? She's very tough, isn't she? And I think that's what you want in your, in your odds-on favourites at Cheltenham. She's got everything. She's she's very, very classy. She's beaten the boys. She's beaten all the horses last year, and she's just extremely solid. Um, the obvious one to sort of graduate to this level after last year, she won the, the Mayor's Novices' uh, is Let's Dance. Um, she's been pretty disappointing, actually. One win from five subsequent starts, three of which have been this season, and... Um, her win came in a, in, a, in a grade three and she ran poorly over three miles last time so they're obviously trying to hand a little bit. She's actually been quite easy to back on Betfair recently which puts me off her. Uh, stable companion Benny de Dieu um, taking advantage of a pretty decent sort of mayor's programme in Ireland uh, and Willie Mullins has done very well with her. It's hard to know where her ceiling of her sort of ability is. Um, Cave Grace is worth a mention. Uh, Nikki Henderson's mayor that I know they sort of quite fancied her last year for the mayor's novices race. Uh, and she didn't make the race. Now, whether she ends up in a, in a Coral Cup or uh, another of the handicaps, because she ran uh, quite poorly in the Betfair hurdle, but she did travel okay for a way. But uh, Henderson's she's suggesting that she's going to um, go up to two miles, two and a half miles, possibly for one of the handicaps. But if she goes here, she's certainly uh, worth an each way bet. Um, Dan, have you come across Labago War at all? Sorry, Harry, um, the, during the course of the. Yeah. Year on any of Dan's sources. She beat me at Weatherby. Yeah, trying, I give, trying to give her three pounds. Right. It was a pretty impossible task. Yeah, I mean, she's, she has yeah. been quite impressive in yeah, bits, she hasn't she? I think I'll go for the stairs, won't I? Does she need it soft? 
Uh, yeah, she, she, she's done well on soft ground and a jumping shot in her full time, but I think if she takes one apple jade in this, so I don't think she'll beat her. Yeah, so I suppose apple in the way it's, a, it's, it's as hard. Thing. Okay, so it looks unfortunate as if apple jade is going to mean that, you know, in a way the battlegrounds is set, isn't it, for you, in terms of the, you know, day one? It's unlikely to be any middle ground. Either three of these four, I suppose three of the four winning might be a score draw, but it's going to go one way or the other right at the beginning, yeah. isn't it? Been there before. Yeah, I've yeah. Seen it before, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, the it, you know, get a bird, The popularity for that horse is over the last week or so. Um, momentum behind him. Um, obviously, you've got Full Park Boomer there and then Apple Jade. So yeah, I don't think the um, even though they, they put the Ultima in the middle of the uh, the middle of the card, I don't think that gets out of it if um, if all those four won. Yeah, the other three races on day one. Um, the Ultima Handicap Chase, the National Hunt Chase, and the Clothes Brothers, which is the Novice Handicap Chase, which is this year a 0 to 145, as opposed to a 0 to 140. And these days, the wage, weight range is about five or six pounds, isn't it, normally? Yeah. Effectively, it was three, sorry, yeah. Effectively, it was three pound last year, and Zandy Man ran over above the, the ceiling. But um, 137 got in last year. We've been trying to work out what it'll get in this year. I'm guessing about 140, 141. And the point of that means if you're going <laughs> to... The old days of sort of putting out a horse, you know, laying one out, I think mean, you've got to be pretty good at it, isn't it? Because you've got to get it within a four or five pound weight range. The ones to keep an eye on there are the ones that are rated one, four, five very early, aren't they? Yeah, Races and one left and left. two, and then, yeah, basically make sure they don't go up. And there are a few that will be running off one, four, five that will catch your eye. Yeah, and, and clearly looking at how the Irish horses got get rated, um, Irish horses won seven of the ten handicaps last year, and an eighth of them didn't say it was effectively handicapped on Irish four. So I, I'm guessing that there'll be quite a few Irish horses on one four six of the novices. Strange, isn't it? How you know clearly they win all the races, and yet according to the Irish, they're impossibly handicapped every single year. Um, That's part of, part of the joy of the, the run up to the festival, isn't it? The howls of protest, and you don't have to be too cynical to believe that the, the howls are there to try and stop them going up any further. Um, have you got anything, Harry? Any of those three? Um, I know we're a long way out with those. Um, no, I don't think we've got anything in the Ultima. No. Um, oh. Robert Sandy, yet? Nothing in there? Don't think you have. Oh, is that the two and a half? Yeah, it's two and a half. Oh, yeah. Have you got um, anything that's treading the line there? I think we might have Born Survivor might go for that. Yeah. Um, he's a good, strong travelling horse. Um, he'd be a big price. Um, that, that probably reflects his chances. Okay, fair enough. And there's not, you've got nothing anyway in the, the National Hunt Chase uh, over four miles. Okay, yeah. we're going to crack straight on to day two, which is the. the net, well, if you haven't got that, <laughs> there's the, the Ballymore as it is now. Um, I mean, Sam Crow. Is there anyone on the panel who wants to say anything against Sam Crow? <laughs> no. No? Uh, any, any... Very any briefly, very briefly. Yeah, go um, on. Obviously clutching its draws here, but... <laughs> when you see a performance like that, the temptation is um, to think that it took absolutely zero out of him. And it looked effortless. Winning a race like that, that looked a very deep novice hurdle beforehand, it, it's not going to be effortless. He, it's... My hope, if you're going to oppose it, the hope would be that perhaps that race just took a bit more out of him physically uh, than it appeared at the time. Um, it's clutching its draws, but at four to six, I think you're, you're allowed to do that. That's fair enough, and it sort of bears in the point you're making, Harry, about the fact that, you know, with Chitabello, it's, it's one thing that they, they're good horses, they come out, they, they look fine, but they, it can leave a mark that isn't immediately obvious until you're sort of all of a sudden under pressure coming to the second last in the, in the battle. Yeah, exactly. Um, and because, yeah, the, the, a good horse come, nine times out of ten comes out of the race well, you know, um, because because they are they are so good you know, um, but he looks an absolute banker. He's been very very impressive. Um, but again, four to six, you know, if you're looking for a bit of value, um, a horse that I really 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 like is on the blind side. I think he's a very very good horse. I think he's the probably one of the strongest British runners of a novice hurdle at Cheltenham this year. You got that form line with you, Mabella, poetic. poetic rhythm. He, he is a very, very good horse, and he's won at Cheltenham. Um, he beat a grade one winner um, the time before um, at, at Sandown. Um, he, he, the only thing is, I don't know where he's been since. That's the way. He's had yeah. sore shins. He right, he's had sore shins. Um, but he's okay. But, yeah, he's okay. He's had sore shins, but he's all right. 
Um, he's a good. Oh, that's the only thing I do know. He is a very, very good horse, and he's done it. He's done it very, very impressively. He love a bit of decent ground. If there's one going to challenge him. It'll be on the blind side. Yeah, I mean, without Sam Crow being in that race, there's no doubt that if you look through on the blind side's Poetic. collateral form, you know, the, the, they've worked out really strongly nearly all those races. Yeah. Poetic Rhythm is a, is a hardy, you know, he's won a grade one because he's been very, very well placed by his trainer, um, but he's a hardened warrior, you know, and, it'd take, and, and he absolutely brushed him aside and Mamela, and we got racing from a hell of a long way out. All right, it probably means nothing, but back and forth has risen to floss. Had a wind up since, mm. absolutely bolted up at, at, at Exeter the other day. On the blind side, of him, he's a good horse. Yeah, I think that's that's fair. And again, he's one that sort of, I wouldn't say he's, he's changed his size. fresh, you know. Albert Bartlett, they were talking about after that Mamella race, and, and you know, the, he showed a lot more speed or a lot more ability to lie up at, at Sandown. So, Sam Crow versus on the blind side, I mean, I think in terms of, you should add in next destination as well, because where they're going to send him. Will they take on Sam Crow? Will they duck that and go for the longer race? I don't, I don't know. So how short is Sam Crow at the moment? Yeah, I mean, he's four to six. I think it's as, as Harry said earlier about um, Kalashnikov. I think part of the problem from a betting perspective and making this a competitive race is he's scaring a lot of horses off and they're going either um, Skybet Supreme or, or the Alfred Bartler as... Um, <laughs> As Nigel Twister there, he's kept calling the race. <coughs> Did he? Yeah, kept calling the Alfred. One so, um, yeah, I mean, Sam, he's four to six. I think he, I think he'll only get shorter, to be perfectly honest. Um, there's going to be a lot of horses that are in the betting here. Um, I know it's not running over, but the likes of Getterbird, Kalashnikov, if the cap fits, who, who simply aren't going to run in the race. Um, he just looks a good thing. I think uh, another horse in that on the blind side racing that was. Caleb Mad was in that race as well, and yeah, he he yeah, bolted up in a um, in a attempt qualifier at Musselburgh as well. So yeah, on on the blind side looks the obvious each way again is Sam Crow, but he's going to be very very hard to beat. There's one of the there's one one of the English runner actually running the ra uh, this race that won here. Uh, Vindication, Kim yes. Bailey's horse. Um, he looks a real smart horse. He stays really well. He's a good neat jumper. He ran a very good bumper. Uh, he won a good bumper at Ludlow. He worked out very well. At the prices, uh, on the blind side of indication, you know, be worth a bet, um, unless you're a heavy, heavy, heavy punter and you get a back some credit for four to six. There'll be plenty of the Irish who'll be banging in that, that category, but I'm, coming, I'm, I'm looking for something, Matt, I'm looking for some stat that tells me that horses with six letters that begin with S have got a shocking race. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, all run. Um, just on vindication, I think Kim Bailey's indicated he's an unlikely runner, so I agree with Harry, I think he looks really good. Kim's got a good, strong <coughs> bunch of novices this year, and he's made it pretty clear he's the best of them. But you do want to be taking non-runner no bet if you're backing him. Uh, he'd shorten. A uh, couple to, uh, if you fancy taking on Sam Crow, personally, I'm a, I'm a believer in Sam Crow, but there are without uh, the favourite markets now. Um, Black Op in that classic hurdle on Cheltenham's Trials Day, which is usually one of the stronger novice hurdles of the winter. It's got quite a history um, of Albert Bartlett winners beating Ballymore winners. Um, the new one, uh, Messini's Maguire, were both outstayed uh, in the same way that Black Op looked to be. So he's 12 to 1 without Sam Crow, and he's only 16 to 1 in the, the main market, which yeah, it doesn't take a genius to work out which of the better of those two prices. Slight concern that Tom George has talked about running in the Albert Bar that Michael's talking about a lot of them, them running scared. But uh, if you do, if he does get the go ahead, I think he's interesting. He looks a really fast horse. And the other one was uh, Vision to Flow, who the lads have mentioned was very good bumper form, beating holographic at punches down last year. Good horses in behind. Slow lo learner over hurdles, but he bolted up last time. Racing post rate of 150, it could be anything. And the vibes from Colin Tizard are very much the post wind up tongue tie, that they've, they've found a secret to him. And he's still 33 to 1. So for those of you who want a bit of each way value, that's big enough, even if you, you don't think there's a lot of value in the wind part, you'll bet against Sam Crow. Okay, but Sam Crow, you think it's the real deal? I, I do, I think it's the speed. The, the stats of this show that. Um, <coughs> The horses who've won the two mile graded races have a fantastic record, champion hurdle trial and arkle trial. And I think that's because they start in the middle of the course and there's a big sweeping bend before they get out onto the main track. There's a hurdle very quickly, so they don't go that quickly. And the better horses have an opportunity to get themselves sorted. So it becomes quite a predictable race. 
and the horses with a turn of foot. And what Sancro looks to have is a real turn of foot. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if he did a sort of you know Barton, French Holly, Monsignor Simmons and, and one by a long way. Okay. I think he's the real deal. So that will be a pretty spectacular start, potentially one way or the other to uh, to day two. The novice chase is the RSA on on day two. It's over three miles half a furlong. And we currently have 47, of which more than half are Irish trained, um, holding the ground. What have we got? Presenting Percy's been at the head of that market for the majority of the year, hasn't he? And these, the other horses, like Mona Lee that ran the other day in Ireland, they sort of come from those races in Ireland over the last month or so. Yeah, um, Presenting Percy heads the market five to two. Mona Lee, 100 to 30. I don't think he's. 100% confirmed, but he's likely to run, isn't he, Monolly, rather than go... He's in the JLT, JLT as well, isn't he? Um, right. And then you've got Black Corton, who, um, for your sort of, um, well, sort of five, ten pound punters, I think he's going to be incredibly popular. Um, you know, being well flagged up, obviously, Bryony Frost will ride. Um, she's in the paper most days. Um, and yeah, Black Corton at seven to one is bound to be popular. But yeah, the, the front two of uh, the head of the market are presenting Percy and Monley. I wouldn't like to say one way or the other which horse will go off favourite. Monley's jumping is very good, despite the fact um, he did fall two runs ago, but that seemed to come totally out of the blue. He was very game when he won what looked a really good um, flow gas at, uh, in Ireland and yeah I think Black Corton in terms of what will the worst result be in the race I'm pretty sure it will be Black Corton. I can't imagine Matt that Black Corton fits any trends of, <laughs> of any horses for ever run in the RSA let alone anything else. I mean, I remember calling him summer jumping winning at Newton Abbott I think it was. Uh, yeah you don't get too many RSA winners who get beaten at Worcester in June um, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, I think the point Mark made about the flow gas is a good one because that's been the best trial for this historically. Um, I think that this is the best betting market of the entire week. I think presenting Percy's the lay of the week. Um, I think that Pat Kelly did a fantastic job to win two potents finals from a dozen runners. But he hasn't, as far as I can see, got too much bank history uh, training chasers. And he's had a very bizarre preparation for this. He got thumped by Shattered Love and Jury Duty in the Florida Pearl. Then he went for a 3-5 handicap on soft ground against slow old boats. Then he had to adjust his technique to jumping hurdles. And then three weeks before the festival, he's been taking on a Gold Cup horse. Now, if he can win an RSA off that preparation, he is a, a really serious horse. Um, but he's run in two good chases, and he's been beaten in both of them. Now, you look at that flow gas form, there are some really good horses in that. Um, Mike mentioned the possibility of Monolee going for the JLT. He has been keen. He didn't really get home in the Albert Bartlett when he was keen last year. And old Feely said he was very keen. He didn't know what he was holding on to coming to the last in the flow. That's just about held on. But if you look at the prices, they're three and four to one. Shattered Love is 18 to one. And she beat him easily in the Florida Pearl. Frank the former winning the grade one at Christmas. Not exactly sure why presenting Percy's going to beat her, but she's six times the price. And Album Photo, who was a close, fast finishing second in the flow gas, had got into all sorts of trouble in the straight. Willie said he's convinced he'll be a lot better up at three miles and the likes of Weapons Amnesty and Lord Windermere have been placed in that internal form round in the RSA. Uh, and there's a, there's a theme with the Ruby Walsh horses that's worth thinking about this week. A lot of these novices in particular, they've got a lot of good jockeys at Clasutton, but they're not Ruby Walsh. And when he gets on some of these, they will improve, particularly in terms of getting into a rhythm over the fences, getting in the right position. Now he's 14 to one and he's only got three quarters of a length to find and looks like he will improve for the step up in trip. Um, and I think he's a fantastic bet. So uh, to summarize, as you've gone out here on, on a limb early on, played your joker halfway <coughs> through day two, what the, so the, the angle, just a summary, is to lay presenting Percy lay, or lay to back? Present, lay presenting Percy for a place. Right. And holds on. Yep. And then uh, you can back Shattered Love's 18 to one and Album Photo's 14 to one. These races are gonna cut up badly. You're only going to get probably seven or eight runners in this and the JLT, because we'll come on to that in a minute. There aren't many runners around. So you can back them each way. And I think there's a good chance that um, those two and Monolee will fight out and finish. Okay. I think the Irish novices are stronger than the British ones. Okay. Um, Black Corton, um, Harry, well, actually, Mike's might got the mic, so let's deal with that first bat. Black Corton, are you a fan? Is it? Out of interest. How We're many of you fans are? How many, yeah, I was going to say, that not some fans, the wrong word. How many of you would black, back Black Corton? In the RSA, ouch. Oh, three, four. 
How five? <laughs> Considered a bit. Six? Six? Yeah, the Briony fans coming out now. It's, it's got to be on. Um, okay, how many of you would be back in Irish horse in it? Never. <laughs> okay, so again, it's about just less than half. Um, Matt, make your case. Let's see how that, your views fit in with that. Yeah, my initial reaction to that flow gas was. Uh, Tremendous race, but they can't all be superstar grade one horses because they did finish in a bit of a heap uh, around Monoly. But I do think he was the best horse in that race by a wee bit more than the actual margin, if that makes sense. Uh, I did tip Dunica, Dunicos for this race on the back of that run. He finished uh, fifth, I think, uh, for Gordon Elliott because I just felt as though he looks all about stamina and that moving up to three miles would really suit him. And Elliott's sort of thrown a spanner in the works by... There's a strong suggestion that he'll go all the way up from two and a half to four miles. So that's the that's the uh, painful one, really, for me, who uh, backed that at 25 to one uh, for the RSA. But Elegant Escape is a fascinating horse. Uh, Colin Tizard was at pains um, this week to tell us that this is the horse that's got the closest uh, to Sam Crow than any other horse. Uh, he was beaten only a length and a bit by him in a point to point. Um, and he. So you're going to say he followed him <laughs> in the sail ringer. And he right, rightly pointed out that he beat Black Horton early in this season. Uh, he was beaten by him at Kempton um, on Boxing Day, but he was actually staying on quite, quite well that day. And I think the Tizards uh, expect Elegant Escape to really appreciate Cheltenham. Um, it's up in the air like so many of these horses are in terms of their target. He has the option of the four-miler as well. I think they're waiting on whether they can get a crack Irish uh, jockey for that race. But if he were to turn up in the RSA chase and remain around 14, 16 to 1, then Elegant Escape must have a, a very good chance having uh, won very easily last time. Um, how many are, are, are novices? I mean, <laughs> no, Black Court, I, I must admit, he's completely week, surprised me. Week, um, there's no hiding that fact. Um, Black Court and look, he's been amazing. He keeps, he keeps winning um, after getting beat at Worcester in the summer. So, yeah, he, he keeps surprising. He keeps running. Um, but I mean, this is a step up again, isn't it? The only thing I, I presenting Percy, I know he was beat by our Duke the other day, but I, I think I'm pretty sure a handicap would have been their first thought, thought of port of call really. Hmm. I think a handicap would suit him better. The fast run race and a lot of runners. He just hung fire for me a bit the other day um, when he got beat by our Duke. I thought um, the way a handicap's run, that might suit him better. So maybe if there's any seven runs, it might not play into his hands too much. Just we, one last point yeah, on presenting course. Percy. Um, Maldini was going for the four mile and now seems to be rerouted re to the Kim Muir. Uh, I just wonder if um, he might end up in the four miler. Derek O'Connor rides almost exclusively for JP these days. He's only got no comment. He's been beaten a distance on his own run. So unless he buys something, he's not going to have a runner. And I just wonder whether Pat Kelly might try and get Derek O'Connor on board. He's four to one non-runner, no bet. Um, widely available for that. If for those of you with betting banks to lend the bookies the money for three weeks, what price is he going to be with Derek O'Connor up if he lines up in the four mile? That's six to four, I think. Yeah. Um, so there are a few of those bets will come on to you, but he'd be one of them. Um, yeah, he's three times the price he should be probably. Okay, and we're presuming as well, would it be caught he's almost certain to go for the 2 5 race? There's no mileage in taking a similar position there. No, I think he's likely to go for that. But there, are a couple, there are a couple of interesting ones when we get on to that in terms of non-run and no bet prices in that race in particular. Okay, the feature race on day two is the Betway Queen Mother Champion Chase. Um, Altior obviously that adds a lot of luster back to this. How many? Okay, I want to ask you a question and keep you keep you busy as we're getting close to the interval. How many of you think Duvan will run? <coughs> Not, I'm going to ask you about how he'll go, uh, how he'll win or anything like that. How many of you think on the race. day that Duvan will turn up in the Queen Mother Champion Chase? Dubious. Yeah. Okay. So, how do you yeah, price? <laughs> Ryan there. Ryan, yeah, Ryan the team went well. No, he's not really. No one thinks he's going to run. No, I mean, that's the thing, isn't it? It's, it's what, uh, some sort of preparation again, Matt. Is there any precedent at all for any? Not for winning it on the, the seasonal day. Yeah. Um, the last really interrupted prep was um, Corlett Quinay, who had uh, bad legs all winter, won the Victor Charm for the old handicap, and that was his only run. Mm. Um, but every other runner since him has had a pretty clear run. So you know, you'd have a little bit of a question mark without you, but a huge one would do that. This must have been a bit of a nightmare race, Michael, during the course of the year, in terms of the will they, won't they back from injury has probably made it quite difficult. 
Yeah, I mean, be competitive with your price. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, it makes it much easier when you go non run and back to be honest, because then you can just leave him in and you don't have to explain away if it turns out that he was never going to run or, or, or whatever, because you get your money back because we're not running no back. But um, Altio's 4 to 6, he's absolutely rock solid. He was very good at Newbury. You've got Min, um, who was beaten, and Connections had excuses why he was beaten by him in the Supreme a couple of years ago. Um, it appears that it's between these two. Politolo, um, realistically, shouldn't be able to beat Altio. Um, he had every chance, and that was probably his queen mother at Newbury. So, yeah, I mean, again, it's, it's another short-priced horse. Um, I'm sort of struggling here, to be honest, because I'm just sort of going through all these favourites, and it's, <laughs> could be Bleak like House, to be honest. But, uh, could be Spam until Christmas, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll bounce back. But yeah, four to six Altio, very, very solid. Okay, so uh, Altio, head and shoulders. How are you the best in the division? Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, he's, he's, he's rock solid. And um, I don't think he'll get beat. The man to my right has got an interesting one here, though. I think he could run well at a big price. Okay. He's been looking over on. my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> it says Altio won't be beaten, is that? <laughs> um, yeah, rather than, I mean, you can keep Sam Crow and some of these other shorties, Altio, uh, Altio's a banker, but rather than find something each way, I'm going to delve into the without the favourite again, and uh, God's own just absolutely leaps out at me, and I might get a few chuckles from along the way, but thankfully Harry's backing me up, but... Um, Good ground. Decent ground, absolutely essential. I, I've got him down as about £15 better on good ground um, as opposed to soft ground. He was second to Underso in the Arkle in 2015. Uh, pretty decent fourth to Sprinter Sacra in his second champion. Underso was second that year, specialty era third. They both won at the festival last year. Um, and last season, he's, he's been there a lot. He ended fi ended up fifth, God's own. But it, again, watch the race back. He's there absolutely. He's booked for third at the very least uh, before he wallops the second last. And he did that. I think he's done that once before on that same fence. So if he can smarten up his jumping um, and we get some good ground, there's a few ifs and buts. But yeah, God's own, God's own definitely. He's, uh, what am I looking at here? He's twenty to one in uh, without the favourite, and you can get sort of first, second, third each way. Uh, prices there as well, so he's a fantastic price. He's a, he made um, he had a bit of a break as they do with him generally um, across the really sort of worst part of the ground, but he actually returned after a good little layoff after three months off, uh, and he ran very well behind waiting patiently at Kempton. So obviously that form stacks up pretty well now, seeing what he's done at Ascot since. Uh, and a strongly run champion, uh, which I think we're almost guaranteed with Min in there, who's a, a very keen goer. Altior stays all day. It'll play into Altior's hands. He'll win, but I really fancy God's own to be staying on, and it might just arrive there on the scene to finish uh, second or third. Yeah, I don't think that's, I don't think that's false at all, to be honest. I'm, no, I'm not convinced by Min. I thought he had everything in his way the other day, just perfectly positioned tactically. He's seen to best advantage. doesn't mean he can't fill the frame, but I'd be amazed if he was able to be to your man personally. And I've always thought Politolog was a... It's a soft finisher, but not a horse that finds a great deal. I thought tactically they were, they did it wrong going to the front. I think I'd have tried to fire LT or up and made sure I didn't lead. But either way, I think to be honest, it probably doesn't change the result. But I don't think it's all political to best effect. But okay, I think that's quite interesting. God's own without without. So we'll chuck that up as something a bit of value against uh, what's going to be a pretty solid favourite, I think, in LT or. Um, and of course, the other race we need to talk about in for, in. Depth is the Weatherby's champion bumper. <laughs> um, Lord only knows how you make head or tail of this. Um, the Irish, well, even they don't seem to know the the Mullingar historically. They've got the right one, is it? That's um, that's one of the stats. But who have you got as favourite at the moment? Yeah, it's a proper ace, this Richard. Six to one, the favourite. This is more like it. <laughs> uh, six to one, Black Bowl. Uh, six to one, did they leave you out? Who's been very impressive? Holographic at sixes and AC Milan who was very good at Newbury, so um, very difficult to equate the English and Irish form. Blackpool was very impressive a couple of weeks back um, in Ireland, and did they leave you out? Um, the only thing that was, was slightly strange was that it was a JP McManus horse that was 
um, not particularly well back, 21 at Ascot and, and won easily. So maybe I'm guessing that was a surprise to maybe a surprise to connections. But yeah, six to one on the field. Um, as I say, this, this is much more like it. Um, let's talk about a little bit about some of the, the, the trends because it is one of those where they all turn up with ones against their name yeah. and you have no, sometimes twos and threes and you've no idea which, what the relative level of the form is like. Uh, absolutely, and um, the way I often approach it is to look for wide margin winners the previous time. There's, there's a strong trend for those horses to do well, horses that have won by more than six lengths. People tend to look at it and think, oh, you've beaten nothing. It doesn't okay. mean anything. But when they crawl around, particularly in Ireland, to spring clear a long way, um, last year failed or won by 20 lengths the previous round. And so that's a useful trend. The, as you say, the last horse that didn't win uh, their prep run in this was Lieberman. And he'd been beaten by Rhinestone Cowboy, who was the favourite for the champion hurdle that year. But you've got the, um, the potential horse, Rhinestone, here, who was second, uh, well, very strong looking bumper at Leopardstown. And if you're ever you're going to have a, a winner of this that didn't win last time out, it might well be him. Derek O'Connor was pretty easy on him, noticeably so, almost as if he was being prepped for another day. Um, so he might be of interest, but we're looking at that more when we get the entries out. Um, the Wednesday, the other races, has got the Bank of Bet of the Week, which is good old cause of causes in the cross country. Um, the cross country, for those of you who've not seen the course itself, it was shoehorned into the middle of the track in the 90s, and it's so tight that you can't really get a gallop up at any point until you get to the, the sprint home and they go on the main track. And what that means is it's very hard to win the race by a long way. 11 of the 13 renewals so far have been won by four lengths or less. Two horses have won by a long way. One was Guard Sean Petru, who won the old handicap off 129 by 10 lengths, which called in a period of his domination of those races. He won the next year of 150. And Cause of Course is last year, he won by nine lengths. And he's obviously at level weight, which makes it a bit easier. Uh, he's got a fantastic festival record, as we all know, very reliable. The, the autumn races haven't seemed to throw him that much up. Tiger Rolls obviously had a nice sighter. But Cause of Causes sets a mighty standard in this division. And he's about three to one with a run. You know, I think he should be about even money. So if you're, you're looking for a short price one that's not out or short, he'd be the one for me for the meeting. OK, I'll be remiss by Ed Chamberlain's been in my ear all the time about Tiger Roll being this year's cause, of course. The fact Tiger Roll is about as small as that chair doesn't seem to bother him too much. But he has had the same prep as Cause of Causes did. They went round the other day. Cause of Causes did that last year. And if you are at Cheltenham and you've got plenty of time, I'd recommend walking the cross-country course. Take a put a string with you. You can find your way back again. Um, it, it's, um, it's certainly different, but the point being made, you're always on the turn. It's nimble. Have you ever ridden in it? I, mean, I, know, I know a lot of people don't because you yeah, know. I've, the, I've had a few rides in it. Um, it all happens pretty quick, doesn't it? Yeah, it does, and the ground's always pretty decent in there, obviously because they don't water anything. But you know, if it dries out a lot, it will be quick. And um, as a jockey's point of view, what I always remember is you do the outside figure of eight first, and then you go to the inside figure of eight, come across the middle length for the last time out onto the track. So. Um, it's pretty cause, good. Causes, yeah, I think he, he looks, he almost looks a banker of the meeting, yeah. really. I mean, second international, I think he, he's got a massive chance. Okay, um, other races on that day, I should ask you about the Fred Winter. Yeah, Fred Winter, I think we'll have a few runners here, possibly, it depends what gets in. Um, solo saxophone is disappointing in the last day, Exeter, one, two, two from two before that. Um, he'll probably go in that, that go, go in the Fred Winter with the headgear on that he um, supported on the flat. Uh, better ground will help him. Uh, we will run M. Boll, who won at Wincanton quite impressively, actually, on Saturday. Um, I was really impressed with him. Um, so he might uh, take his chance there. And we might run Nuba Negra, also uh, a Spanish horse, actually, um, uh, that, that's got a bit of form at the track behind Apple Shakira. Um, one at Doncaster and Egg and Spoon race the last day, um, so he'll run there as well. And was he in evidence here earlier? He was here. Um, he was here with North Hill Harvey, and they did a mile six uh, gallop, and uh, yeah, they both enjoyed themselves, um, and, and and had a good day out. Very kind of hunting to let us let us do that. So um, makes a massive difference, really. You know, now we can just tick him tick him over at home rather than having to press any buttons, really. Um, so he will, you know, he, he'll take his chance in the Fred Winter, hopefully all being well. I mentioned a bit earlier with, um, with Jack about the fact that, you know, 
if you get this really cold snap about, it's all very well saying how it interferes with the actual race meetings, but of course it, it's the prep. Is there sort of a little bit of pressure, casting eyes, looking forward to think, bring them for a gallop today? Yeah, you know, obviously, um, so sort we're of getting three weeks away, so that's the sort of time when you want to, you've got a bit of time to recover from, you know, they haven't had a, haven't had a hard day today, but they've come on the box, and travelled an hour and a half, it just tightens everything up, you know. Even coming on the lorry makes a massive difference to a racehorse. Um, he was very fresh today and, and was happy to be out there. So, um, like I say, it's, um, we can just tick him over now and hopefully keep everything right. And it looks like it's be really cold next week, but you know we've got good facilities at home. Um, I was going to ask you about that because obviously yeah. you're in a centre. You've got you know Lambourne yeah. or Newmarket. You've yeah. got other people's staff keeping working the whole yeah. time. Is, would it be a challenge for you as sort of an isolated yard to to keep everything yeah. ticking over? Yeah, it does. I mean, we've got a massive team at home um, that makes sure everything happens and makes sure we can get the horses out every day. The whole of the winter so far, we haven't missed a day. So um, that just shows you uh, what sort of team we have at home, and we do a lot of salting, a lot. Of, we've got our own gritter and. And, and, and to we make sure in for a two o'clock morning shift, yeah. Massive, uh, a massive team to make sure all these things happen. But um, that's what it means to start to the staff as well to get the horses to get the horses out. Um, but yeah, he'll hopefully go for the Fred Winter and he'll all be well. And I think the Coral Cup is out on the Wednesday. The Coral Cup is indeed the other yeah, race on the, the Wednesday. Coral yeah, Coral Cup on the Wednesday will run. Longhouse Hall will take his chance here. He ran a mighty race the last day at Doncaster over three miles, which stretched him. He was second behind Diamond King in the race two years ago. Um, he carries six pound more, I think, this year, which is going to be a little bit more difficult. But the way this race is running, if it comes up good ground, he will run. He will run a big race, and I think I don't know what price he is, twenty to one, probably, possibly something like that. But I, the way the race will be run, and you come off a strong pace, he's a very strong travelling horse. He's one of the. He's one at the track before and was second at the festival, so a uh, big prize here run well. That's uh, Long House Hall. And, and that point you were saying, you mentioned with a couple of, of horses about the unique sort of tempos of a, a festival yeah. race where you, you're on the go for that length of yeah, time. The, the, thing, the thing is, again, you know, on the, on the Coral Cup course, the new course on the inside, again, it is so, so rough. You need something a bit street wise, you need something that travels well. Um, if you're off the bridle at the top of the hill, you might as well pull up uh, on, on, on good ground, that is. Um, you know, you need to you need to be travelling down to the second last, and uh, that's normally taking like a speed bump and then swing into the straight and kick for home. So, um, but he's a good, strong travelling horse, and he'll get me. He will get me to turning on the bridle. Okay, that might be uh, far enough to at least uh, get a good run for your money. Um, Matt, anything else on those those last races? And we'll have a a break. And I just remind you about yep. a bit of the housekeeping as well. <laughs> Paul Nichols has. Um, an excellent race in the Fred Winter um, and Act of Valor. He started the season as I think they were hoping as a, as a triumph hurdle <coughs> prospect, and it sounds like they're quite happy um, in the camp with his mark of 136. So he's worth keeping an eye on for, for Nichols, who does well in the race. Um, in the Coral Cup, William Henry is already favourite, but I do think there's quite a bit of scope for him to get pretty short on the day. Um, the race, uh, the nice trial. Novice hurdle uh, that Matt was talking about earlier that throws up winners every single season, won this year by Santini. He was actually, William Henry was second uh, in the race to Holston last year with Poetic Rhythm, another horse that we've touched upon, and a nice, um, really nice horse of Paul Nichols called Top of the Game. They were all beaten. Um, William Henry was in there. He was being lined up for the Ballymore last season, but he, he had a minor setback, missed the meeting, but came back in the uh, April meeting and won a novice hurdle at Cheltenham. Um, started this season with a with a over fences uh, pulled up and they immediately switched him back to hurdles and he won the Lanzarote in pretty good style. He's uh, he's not been hammered by the handicapper for that at all and I think he's on one five one uh, and there's and I think he's a Grade One horse in a handicap. Okay, so there's a few um, thoughts for you. We're going to take a break. We'll try and keep it to about 15 minutes if you don't mind. So we ended a reasonable time. Um, I've got various things to, to plug. Um, Sorry, sorry. I've got one question on Facebook Live from Keelan McCarney, and it's for Harry. Um, I know you touched on Bond Spider, but he just wants to know uh, what sort of improvement you think has got in him back on spring ground. Yeah, uh, interesting. Um, he's obviously had a long break. Um, he's a good, strong travelling horse. <laughs> to be honest, he's, just, he's been a bit disappointing. Uh, we thought it'd be better, and you know, thought he'd sort of you know, go on and, and improve a little bit better. And maybe that just might mean that he's probably not on a bad mark now. 
Um, I would say he wouldn't be without a chance. Um, but if you stop the race two out in every single race, he's probably running. He looks the winner, and he's just a bit of a weak finisher. So I don't know. Maybe a really fast run handicap might suit him. Um, and you know, definitely probably the spring round will help. And he's coming into the festival fresh. Um, we're very happy with him at home. So I would put him on off him. But it, it, what I'm saying is, if he was twenty to one, it's probably the price he should be. Um, that's not saying he doesn't have a chance. Um, but you know there would have to be improvement in in in, in the better ground and um, maybe a really fast run race will, will suit him and hopefully they might just stop in front a little bit.